Then and Now looks at a community provide a glimpse into the community's past. They're a way to see how a community or town looked then. We'll examine two homes that once stood in Anderson next under the kudzu. To celebrate the nation's centennial in 1876, Anderson resident Nick Prevost and his wife Virginia visited the exposition in Philadelphia. There he saw a model of the German pavilion on display designed by H.J. Schwartzman, a noted German architect. Prevost was so taken by this building that when he returned to Anderson, he used this model as inspiration for his home that was located on what is now Prevost Street. An early example of the neoclassical revival style the home included significant Renaissance details. Only a one-story house, the large structure was divided into three bays with a porch stretching across the south facade. The house was originally surrounded by flower, fruit, and vegetable gardens. The property also included a servant's house, carriage house, and stables. The Prevost house was listed on the National Register of Historic Places on July 10, 1984. By 2005, it had been demolished. A vacant lot is all that remains. Orange Grove, or the Watson House, was built during the 1840s at the intersection of North Main and Boulevard, probably by Samuel B. Jones, son-in-law to Bishop William Capers, a local Methodist leader. It is most famous for being the childhood home of Confederate General and Episcopal Bishop Ellison Capers, son of Bishop Capers. In his writings, Ellison Capers called his time there the happiest days of his life. The two-story central portion of the house was the original structure and called Box Cottage. During the 1850s, the two one-story wings were added. The house featured a long porch which stretched the length of the house. The source of the name is unknown, but during the Civil War, the house served as a school called Anderson High School at Orange Grove. During the 1880s, the property was bought and farmed by the Watson family. They owned it until it was demolished in 1970 to make way for a shopping center that now includes a grocery store and post office. Few old homes are saved or preserved. Many are simply abandoned when the cost of their upkeep is too high. Without residents, buildings will quickly deteriorate, and this proves true the old Sioux adage that only the rocks live forever. I'm Brian Scott. Join me next week as the summer heats up right here under the kudzu.